Delphi, Greek, Delphoi El Phi, formerly also called Pytho, Pytho is famous as the ancient sanctuary that grew rich as the seat of Pythia, the oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient classical world. Moreover, the Greeks considered Delphi the navel or center of the world, as represented by the stone monument known as the Omphalos of Delphi. It occupies an impressive site on the southwestern slope of Mount Parnassus, overlooking the coastal plain to the south and the valley of Phocis. It is now an extensive archaeological site with a small modern town of the same name nearby. It is recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in having had a phenomenal influence in the ancient world, as evidenced by the rich monuments built there by most of the important ancient Greek city-states, demonstrating their fundamental Hellenic unity. <inaudible> Origins and location Delphi is located in upper central Greece, on multiple plateaux along the slope of Mount Parnassus, and includes the sanctuary of Apollo, the site of the ancient oracle. This semicircular spur is known as Phaedriades, and overlooks the Pleistos Valley. In myths dating to the classical period of ancient Greece 510 to 323 BC, Zeus determined the site of Delphi when he sought to find the center of his grandmother Earth, Gaia. He sent two eagles flying from the eastern and western extremities, and the path of the eagles crossed over Delphi where the omphalos, or navel of Gaia was found. Earlier myths include traditions that Pythia, or the Delphic oracle, already was the site of an important oracle in the pre-classical Greek world as early as 1400 BC and, rededicated from about 800 BC, when it served as the major site during classical times for the worship of the god Apollo. Apollo was said to have slain Python, a Draco a serpent or a dragon who lived there and protected the navel of the earth. Python, derived from the verb pytho, pytho to rot, is claimed by some to be the original name of the site in recognition of Python which Apollo defeated. The Homeric hymn to Delphic Apollo recalled that the ancient name of this site had been Chrysa. Others relate that it was named Pytho, pytho and that Pythia, the priestess serving as the oracle, was chosen from their ranks by a group of priestesses who officiated at the temple. Excavation at Delphi, which was a post-Mycenaean settlement of the late 9th century, has uncovered artifacts increasing steadily in volume beginning with the last quarter of the 8th century BC. Pottery and bronze as well as tripod dedications continue in a steady stream, in contrast to Olympia. Neither the range of objects nor the presence of prestigious dedications proves that Delphi was a focus of attention for a wide range of worshippers, but the large quantity of valuable goods, found in no other mainland sanctuary, encourages that view. Apollo's sacred precinct in Delphi was a Panhellenic sanctuary, where every four years, starting in 586 BC athletes from all over the Greek world competed in the Pythian Games, one of the four Panhellenic Games, precursors of the modern Olympics. The victors at Delphi were presented with a laurel crown Stephanos, which was ceremonially cut from a tree by a boy who re-enacted the slaying of the python. These competitions are also called Stephantic Games. After the crown, Delphi was set apart from the other games sites because it hosted the Mausikos Agon, musical competitions. These Pythian Games rank second among the four Stephanitic Games chronologically and in importance. These games, though, were different from the games at Olympia in that they were not of such vast importance to the city of Delphi as the games at Olympia were to the area surrounding Olympia. Delphi would have been a renowned city whether or not it hosted these games, it had other attractions that led to it being labeled the omphalos navel of the earth, in other words, the center of the world, in the inner Hestia hearth of the Temple of Apollo, an eternal flame burned. After the Battle of Plataea, the Greek cities extinguished their fires and brought new fire from the hearth of Greece. At Delphi, in the foundation stories of several Greek colonies, the founding colonists were first dedicated at Delphi. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious significance. The name Delphi comes from the same root as Delphi's Delphi's womb, and may indicate archaic veneration of Gaia at the site. Apollo is connected with the site by his epithet Delphinios Delphinios, the Delphinian. The epithet is connected with dolphins Greek Delphus, Enos in the Homeric hymn to Apollo line 400, recounting the legend of how Apollo first came to Delphi in the shape of a dolphin, carrying Cretan priests on his back. The Homeric name of the oracle is Pytho, 
Another legend held that Apollo walked to Delphi from the north and stopped at Tempe, a city in Thessaly, to pick laurel also known as bay tree which he considered to be a sacred plant. In commemoration of this legend, the winners at the Pythian Games received a wreath of laurel picked in the temple. Delphi became the site of a major temple to Phoebus Apollo, as well as the Pythian Games and the famous prehistoric oracle. Even in Roman times, hundreds of votive statues remained, described by Pliny the Younger and seen by Pausanias. Carved into the temple were three phrases, Nathi Siautan Nathi Siautan Topic. Know thyself, and Medan again Medan again. Nothing in excess, and Hengya para delta 8 Hengya para date equals Make a pledge and mischief is nigh. In antiquity, the origin of these phrases was attributed to one or more of the seven sages of Greece by authors such as Plato and Pausanias. Additionally, according to Plutarch's essay on the meaning of the E at Delphi, the only literary source for the inscription there was also inscribed at the temple a large letter E. Among other things, epsilon signifies the number five. However, ancient as well as modern scholars have doubted the legitimacy of such inscriptions. According to one pair of scholars, the actual authorship of the three maxims set up on the Delphian temple may be left uncertain. Most likely they were popular proverbs, which tended later to be attributed to particular sages. According to the Homeric hymn to the Pythian Apollo, Apollo shot his first arrow as an infant which effectively slew the serpent Pytho, the son of Gaia, who guarded the spot. To atone the murder of Gaia's son, Apollo was forced to fly and spend eight years in menial service before he could return forgiven. A festival, the Septaria, was held every year, at which the whole story was represented, the slaying of the serpent, and the flight, atonement, and return of the god. The Pythian Games took place every four years to commemorate Apollo's victory. Another regular Delphi festival was the Theophania. Theophania an annual festival in spring celebrating the return of Apollo from his winter quarters in Hyperborea. The culmination of the festival was a display of an image of the gods, usually hidden in the sanctuary, to worshippers. The Theosenia was held each summer, centered on a feast for gods and ambassadors from other states. Myths indicate that Apollo killed the Thonic serpent Python, Pythia in older myths, but according to some later accounts his wife, Pythia, who lived beside the Castalian spring. Some sources say it is because Python had attempted to rape Leto while she was pregnant with Apollo and Artemis. This spring flowed toward the temple but disappeared beneath, creating a cleft which emitted chemical vapors that caused the oracle at Delphi to reveal her prophecies. Apollo killed Python but had to be punished for it, since she was a child of Gaia. The shrine dedicated to Apollo was originally dedicated to Gaia and shared with Poseidon. The name Pythia remained as the title of the Delphic oracle. Erwin Rode wrote that the python was an earth spirit, who was conquered by Apollo, and buried under the Omphalos, and that it is a case of one deity setting up a temple on the grave of another. Another view holds that Apollo was a fairly recent addition to the Greek pantheon coming originally from Lydia. The Etruscans coming from northern Anatolia also worshipped Apollo, and it may be that he was originally identical with Mesopotamian Aplu, an Akkadian title meaning, son. Originally given to the plague god Nergal, son of Enlil. Apollo Smintheus Greek Apollon Smintheus, the mouse killer eliminates mice, a primary cause of disease, hence he promotes preventive medicine. Topic. Oracle of Delphi Delphi is perhaps best known for its oracle, the Pythia, the Sibyl or priestess at the sanctuary dedicated to Apollo. According to Aeschylus in the prologue of the Eumenides, the oracle had origins in prehistoric times and the worship of Gaia, a view echoed by H. W. Park. One tale of the sanctuary's discovery states that a goatherd, who grazed his flocks on Parnassus, one day observed his goats playing with great agility upon nearing a chasm in the rock. The goatherd noticing this held his head over the chasm causing the fumes to go to his brain, throwing him into a strange trance. Apollo spoke through his oracle. She had to be an older woman of blameless life chosen from among the peasants of the area. Alone in an enclosed inner sanctum ancient Greek adeton, do not enter. She sat on a tripod seat over an opening in the earth the chasm. According to legend, when Apollo slew Python its body fell into this fissure and fumes arose from its decomposing body. 
Intoxicated by the vapors, the Sibyl would fall into a trance, allowing Apollo to possess her spirit. In this state she prophesied. The oracle could not be consulted during the winter months, for this was traditionally the time when Apollo would live among the Hyperboreans. Dionysus would inhabit the temple during his absence. The time to consult Pythia for an oracle during the year is determined from astronomical and geological grounds related to the constellations of Lyra and Cygnus, but the hydrocarbon vapors emitted from the chasm. Similar practice was followed in other Apollo oracles too. While in a trance, the Pythia raved, probably a form of ecstatic speech, and her ravings were translated by the priests of the temple into elegant hexameters. It has been speculated that the ancient writers, including Plutarch who had worked as a priest at Delphi, were correct in attributing the oracular effects to the sweet-smelling pneuma ancient Greek for breath, wind or vapor escaping from the chasm in the rock. That exhalation could have been high in the known anesthetic and sweet-smelling ethylene or other hydrocarbons such as ethane known to produce violent trances. Though this theory remains debatable the authors put up a detailed answer to their critics, ancient sources describe the priestess using «laurel» to inspire her prophecies. Several alternative plant candidates have been suggested including cannabis, hyacyamus, rhododendron and oleander. Harris's claims that a review of contemporary toxicological literature indicates that oleander causes symptoms similar to those shown by the Pythia, and his study of ancient texts shows that oleander was often included under the term. Laurel. The Pythia may have chewed oleander leaves and inhaled their smoke prior to her oracular pronouncements and sometimes dying from the toxicity. The toxic substances of oleander resulted in symptoms similar to those of epilepsy, the sacred disease, which may have been seen as the possession of the Pythia by the spirit of Apollo. The Delphic oracle exerted considerable influence throughout the Greek world, and she was consulted before all major undertakings including wars and the founding of colonies. She also was respected by the Greek-influenced countries around the periphery of the Greek world, such as Lydia, Caria, and even Egypt. The oracle was also known to the early Romans. Rome's seventh and last king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, after witnessing a snake near his palace, sent a delegation including two of his sons to consult the oracle. In 83 BC a Thracian tribe raided Delphi, burned the temple, plundered the sanctuary and stole the unquenchable fire from the altar. During the raid, part of the temple roof collapsed. The same year, the temple was severely damaged by an earthquake. Thus the oracle fell in decay and the surrounding area became impoverished. The sparse local population led to difficulties in filling the posts required. The oracle's credibility waned due to doubtful predictions. The oracle flourished again in the 2nd century AD during the rule of Emperor Hadrian, who is believed to have visited the oracle twice and offered complete autonomy to the city. By the 4th century, Delphi had acquired the status of a city. Constantine the Great looted several monuments, most notably the tripod of Plataea, which he used to decorate his new capital, Constantinople. Despite the rise of Christianity across the Roman Empire, the oracle remained a religious center throughout the 4th century, and the Pythian Games continued to be held at least until 424 AD. However, the decline continued. The attempt of the Emperor Julian to revive polytheism did not survive his reign. Excavations have revealed a large three-aisled basilica in the city, as well as traces of a church building in the sanctuary's gymnasium. The site was abandoned in the 6th or 7th centuries, although a single bishop of Delphi is attested in an episcopal list of the late 8th, early 9th centuries. History Ancient Delphi Delphi was since ancient times a place of worship for Gaia, the mother goddess connected with fertility. The town started to gain Pan-Hellenic relevance as both a shrine and an oracle in the 7th century BC. Initially under the control of Phocian settlers based in nearby Kira currently Idia, Delphi was reclaimed by the Athenians during the First Sacred War 597 BC. The conflict resulted in the consolidation of the Amphictyonic League, which had both a military and a religious function revolving around the protection of the Temple of Apollo. This shrine was destroyed by fire in 548 BC and then fell under the control of the Alcmaeonids banned from Athens. 
In 449 to 448 BC, the Second Sacred War, fought in the wider context of the First Peloponnesian War between the Peloponnesian League led by Sparta and the Delian Attic League led by Athens, resulted in the Phocians gaining control of Delphi and the management of the Pythian Games. In 356 BC the Phocians under Philomelos captured and sacked Delphi, leading to the Third Sacred War 356 BC, which ended with the defeat of the former and the rise of Macedon under the reign of Philip II. This led to the Fourth Sacred War 339 BC, which culminated in the Battle of Chaeronea 338 BC and the establishment of Macedonian rule over Greece. In Delphi, Macedonian rule was superseded by the Aetolians in 279 BC, when a Gallic invasion was repelled, and by the Romans in 191 BC. The site was sacked by Lucius Cornelius Sulla in 86 BC, during the Mithridatic Wars, and by Nero in 66 AD. Although subsequent Roman emperors of the Flavian dynasty contributed towards to the restoration of the site, it gradually lost importance. In the course of the 3rd century mystery cults became more popular than the traditional Greek pantheon. Christianity, which started as yet one more mystery cult, soon gained ground, and this eventually resulted in the persecution of pagans in the late Roman Empire. The anti-pagan legislation of the Flavian dynasty deprived ancient sanctuaries of their assets. The emperor Julian attempted to reverse this religious climate, yet his pagan revival was particularly short-lived. When the doctor Oribasius visited the Oracle of Delphi, in order to question the fate of paganism, he received a pessimistic answer. Tell the king that the flute has fallen to the ground. Phoebus does not have a home anymore, neither an oracular laurel, nor a speaking fountain, because the talking water has dried out. It was shut down during the persecution of pagans in the late Roman Empire by Theodosius I in 381 AD. Abandonment and rediscovery The Ottomans finalized their domination over Phocis and Delphi about. Delphi itself remained almost uninhabited for centuries. It seems that one of the first buildings of the early modern era was the monastery of the Dormition of Mary or of Panagia the Mother of God built above the ancient gymnasium at Delphi. It must have been towards the end of the 15th or in the 16th century that a settlement started forming there, which eventually ended up forming the village of Castri. Ottoman Delphi gradually began to be investigated. The first Westerner to describe the remains in Delphi was Suriaco de Pizzicoli Syriacus of Ancona, a 15th-century merchant turned diplomat and antiquarian. He visited Delphi in March 1436 and remained there for six days. He recorded all the visible archaeological remains based on Pausanias for identification. He described the stadium and the theatre at that date as well as some free-standing pieces of sculpture. He also recorded several inscriptions, most of which are now lost. His identifications however were not always correct, for example he described a round building he saw as the Temple of Apollo while this was simply the base of the Argives ex voto. A severe earthquake in 1500 caused much damage. In 1766 an English expedition funded by the Society of Dilettanti included the Oxford epigraphist Richard Chandler, the architect Nicholas Rivette, and the painter William Pars. Their studies were published in 1769 under the title Ionian Antiquities, followed by a collection of inscriptions, and two travel books, one about Asia Minor 1775, and one about Greece 1776. Apart from the antiquities, they also related some vivid descriptions of daily life in Castri, such as the crude behavior of the Turco-Albanians who guarded the mountain passes. In 1805 Edward Dodwell visited Delphi, accompanied by the painter Simone Pomardi. Lord Byron visited in 1809, accompanied by his friend John Cam Hobhouse. Yet there I've wandered by the vaulted rill. Yes. Side or Delphi's long-deserted shrine. Where, save that feeble fountain, all is still. He carved his name on the same column in the gymnasium as Lord Aberdeen, later Prime Minister, who had visited a few years before. Proper excavation did not start until the late 19th century see excavations section after the village had moved. Topic. Buildings and structures 
Occupation of the site at Delphi can be traced back to the Neolithic period with extensive occupation and use beginning in the Mycenaean period 1600 to 1100 BC. Most of the ruins that survive today date from the most intense period of activity at the site in the 6th century BC. Topic: <laughs> Temple of Apollo The ruins of the Temple of Delphi visible today date from the 4th century BC, and are of a peripteral Doric building. It was erected by Spindarus, Xenodoros, and Agathon on the remains of an earlier temple, dated to the 6th century BC which itself was erected on the site of a 7th century BC construction attributed to the architects Trophonios and Agamedes. Amphictyonic Council The Amphictyonic Council was a council of representatives from six Greek tribes that controlled Delphi and also the quadrennial Pythian Games. They met biannually and came from Thessaly and central Greece. Over time, the town of Delphi gained more control of itself and the council lost much of its influence. Treasuries <inaudible> 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 From the entrance of the site, continuing up the slope almost to the temple itself, are a large number of votive statues, and numerous so-called treasuries. These were built by many of the Greek city-states to commemorate victories and to thank the oracle for her advice which was thought to have contributed to those victories. These buildings held the rich offerings made to Apollo, these were frequently a tithe, or tenth of the spoils of a battle. The most impressive is the now restored Athenian treasury, built to commemorate their victory at the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC. The Siphonian treasury was dedicated by the city of Siphnos whose citizens gave a tithe of the yield from their silver mines until the mines came to an abrupt end when the sea flooded the workings. One of the largest of the treasuries was that of Argos. Built in the late Doric period, the Argives took great pride in establishing their place amongst the other city-states. Completed in 380 BC, the treasury draws inspiration mostly from the Temple of Hera located in the Argolis, the Acropolis of the city. However, recent analysis of the archaic elements of the treasury suggest that its founding preceded this. Other identifiable treasuries are those of the Sicyonians, the Boeotians and the Thebans. <laughs> <laughs> Altar of the Chians Located in front of the Temple of Apollo, the main altar of the sanctuary was paid for and built by the people of Chios. It is dated to the 5th century BC by the inscription on its cornice. Made entirely of black marble, except for the base and cornice, the altar would have made a striking impression. It was restored in 1920. Topic. Stoa of the Athenians The stoa leads off northeast from the main sanctuary. It was built in the Ionic order and consists of seven fluted columns, unusually carved from single pieces of stone most columns were constructed from a series of discs joined together. The inscription on the stylobate indicates that it was built by the Athenians after their naval victory over the Persians in 478 BC, to house their war trophies. The stoa was attached to the existing polygonal wall. Topic. Sibyl Rock The Sibyl Rock is a pulpit-like outcrop of rock between the Athenian treasury and the stoa of the Athenians upon the sacred way which leads up to the Temple of Apollo in the archaeological area of Delphi. It is claimed to be where an ancient Sibyl pre-dating the Pythia of Apollo sat to deliver her prophecies. Topic. Theater The ancient theater at Delphi was built further up the hill from the Temple of Apollo giving spectators a view of the entire sanctuary and the valley below. It was originally built in the 4th century BC but was remodeled on several occasions, particularly in 160-159 BC at the expenses of King Eumenes II of Pergamon and in 67 AD on the occasion of Emperor Nero's visit. The Koilin cavia leans against the natural slope of the mountain whereas its eastern part overrides a little torrent which led the water of the fountain Cassotus right underneath the Temple of Apollo. The orchestra was initially a full circle with a diameter measuring 7 meters. The rectangular scene building ended up in two arched openings, of which the foundations are preserved today. Access to the theater was possible through the paradoi, i.e. the side corridors. 
On the support walls of the Paradoi are engraved large numbers of manumission inscriptions recording fictitious sales of the slaves to the god. The coilin was divided horizontally in two zones via a corridor called diazoma. The lower zone had 27 rows of seats and the upper one only eight. Six radially arranged stairs divided the lower part of the coilin in seven tiers. The theater could accommodate about 4,500 spectators. On the occasion of Nero's visit to Greece in 67 AD, various alterations took place. The orchestra was paved and delimited by a parapet made of stone. The proscenium was replaced by a low pedestal, the pulpitum, its facade was decorated with scenes from Hercules' myth in relief. Further repairs and transformations took place in the 2nd century AD. Pausanias mentions that these were carried out under the auspices of Herod Atticus. In antiquity, the theater was used for the vocal and musical contests which formed part of the program of the Pythian Games in the late Hellenistic and Roman period. The theater was abandoned when the sanctuary declined in late antiquity. After its excavation and initial restoration it hosted theatrical performances during the Delphic festivals organized by A. Cyclianos and his wife, Eva Palmer, in 1927 and in 1930. It has recently been restored again as the serious landslides posed a grave threat for its stability for decades. Tholos The Tholos at the Sanctuary of Athena Pronoia Athena, Athena of Forethought is a circular building that was constructed between 380 and 360 BC. It consisted of 20 Doric columns arranged with an exterior diameter of 14.76 meters, with 10 Corinthian columns in the interior. The Tholos is located approximately a half a mile 800 meters from the main ruins at Delphi at 38 degrees 28 minutes 49 seconds north 22 degrees 30 minutes 28 seconds east. Three of the Doric columns have been restored, making it the most popular site at Delphi for tourists to take photographs. The architect of the vaulted temple at Delphi is named by Vitruvius, in De Architectura Book 7, as Theodorus Phocius, not Theodorus of Samos, whom Vitruvius names separately. Topic. Gymnasium The gymnasium, which is half a mile away from the main sanctuary, was a series of buildings used by the youth of Delphi. The building consisted of two levels, a stoa on the upper level providing open space, and a palaestra, pool and baths on lower floor. These pools and baths were said to have magical powers, and imparted the ability to communicate to Apollo himself. <laughs> Stadium The stadium is located further up the hill, beyond the Via Sacra and the theatre. It was originally built in the 5th century BC but was altered in later centuries. The last major remodeling took place in the 2nd century AD under the patronage of Herodes Atticus when the stone seating was built and arched entrance. It could seat 6,500 spectators and the track was 177 meters long and 25.5 meters wide. Topic. Hippodrome It was at the Pythian Games that prominent political leaders, such as Cleisthenes, tyrant of Sicyon, and Hieron, tyrant of Syracuse, competed with their chariots. The hippodrome where these events took place was referred to by Pindar, and this monument was sought by archaeologists for over two centuries. Its traces have recently been found at Gonia in the plain of Crissa in the place where the original stadium was sited. Topic. Polygonal wall The retaining wall was built to support the terrace housing the construction of the Second Temple of Apollo in 548 BC. Its name is taken from the polygonal masonry of which it is constructed. At a later date, from 200 BC onwards, the stones were inscribed with the manumission contracts of slaves who were consecrated to Apollo. Approximately a thousand manumissions are recorded on the wall. Topic. Castalian Spring The sacred spring of Delphi lies in the ravine of the Phaedriades. The preserved remains of two monumental fountains that received the water from the spring date to the Archaic period and the Roman, with the latter cut into the rock. Topic. Athletic statues 
Delphi is famous for its many preserved athletic statues. It is known that Olympia originally housed far more of these statues, but time brought ruin to many of them, leaving Delphi as the main site of athletic statues. Cleobis and Bitten, two brothers renowned for their strength, are modeled in two of the earliest known athletic statues at Delphi. The statues commemorate their feat of pulling their mother's cart several miles to the sanctuary of Hera in the absence of oxen. The neighbors were most impressed and their mother asked Hera to grant them the greatest gift. When they entered Hera's temple, they fell into a slumber and never woke, dying at the height of their admiration. The perfect gift, the charioteer of Delphi is another ancient relic that has withstood the centuries. It is one of the best known statues from antiquity. The charioteer has lost many features, including his chariot and his left arm, but he stands as a tribute to athletic art of antiquity. Topic. Architectural traditions Ancient tradition accounted for four temples that successively occupied the site before the 548 Sevenths BC fire, following which the Alcmaeonids built a fifth. The poet Pindar celebrated the Alcmaeonids' temple in Pythian 7.8–9 and he also provided details of the third building P 8. 65-75. Other details are given by Pausanias 10.5.9-13 and the Homeric hymn to Apollo 294 FF. The first temple was said to have been constructed out of olive branches from Tempe. The second was made by bees out of wax and wings but was miraculously carried off by a powerful wind and deposited among the Hyperboreans. The third, as described by Pindar, was created by the gods Hephaestus and Athena, but its architectural details included siren-like figures or enchantresses, whose baneful songs eventually provoked the Olympian gods to bury the temple in the earth according to Pausanias, it was destroyed by earthquake and fire. In Pindar's words, addressed to the muses, Muses, what was its fashion, shown by the skill in all arts of the hands of Hephaestus and Athena. Of bronze the walls, and of bronze stood the pillars beneath, but of gold were six enchantresses, who sang above the eagle. But the sons of Cronus opened the earth with a thunderbolt, and hid the holiest of all things made, away from their children, and wives, when they hung their lives on the honey-hearted words. The fourth temple was said to have been constructed from stone by Trophonius and Agamedes. The Delphi Archaeological Museum The Delphi Archaeological Museum is at the foot of the main archaeological complex, on the east side of the village, and on the north side of the main road. The museum houses an impressive collection associated with ancient Delphi, including the earliest known notation of a melody, the famous charioteer, golden treasures discovered beneath the sacred way, and fragments of reliefs from the Siphonian treasury. Immediately adjacent to the exit and overlooked by most tour guides is the inscription that mentions the Roman proconsul Gallio. Entries to the museum and to the main complex are separate and chargeable, and a reduced rate ticket gets entry to both. There is a small café, and a post office by the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Excavations The site had been occupied by the village of Castri since medieval times. Before a systematic excavation of the site could be undertaken, the village had to be relocated but the residents resisted. The opportunity to relocate the village occurred when it was substantially damaged by an earthquake, with villagers offered a completely new village in exchange for the old site. In 1893 the French archaeological school removed vast quantities of soil from numerous landslides to reveal both the major buildings and structures of the Sanctuary of Apollo and of Athena Pronoia along with thousands of objects, inscriptions and sculptures. The site is now an archaeological one, and a very popular tourist destination. It is easily accessible from Athens as a day trip, and is often combined with the winter sports facilities available on Mount Parnassus, as well as the beaches and summer sports facilities of the nearby coast of Phocis. The site is also protected as a site of extraordinary natural beauty, and the views from it are also protected. No industrial artifacts are to be seen from Delphi other than roads and traditional architecture residences for example high voltage power lines and the like are routed so as to be invisible from the area of the sanctuary. 5th century Delphi 
During the Great Excavation were discovered architectural members from a 5th century Christian basilica, when Delphi were a bishopric. Other important late Roman buildings are the Eastern Baths, the House with the Peristyle, the Roman Agora, the large cistern USW. At the outskirts of the city there were located late Roman cemeteries. To the southeast of the precinct of Apollo lay the so-called Southeastern Mansion, a very large building with a 65 meters long facade, spread over four levels, with four triclinia and private baths. Large storage jars kept the provisions, whereas other pottery vessels and luxury items were discovered in the rooms. Among the finds stands out a tiny leopard made of mother of pearl, possibly of Sasanian origin, on display in the ground floor gallery of the Delphi Archaeological Museum. The mansion dates to the beginning of the 5th century and functioned as a private house until 580, later however it was transformed into a potter's workshop. It is only then, in the beginning of the 6th century, that the city seems to decline, its size is reduced and its trade contacts seem to be drastically diminished. Local pottery production is produced in large quantities, it is coarser and made of reddish clay, aiming at satisfying the needs of the inhabitants. The Sacred Way remained the main street of the settlement, transformed, however, into a street with commercial and industrial use. Around the Agora were built workshops as well as the only Intramuros early Christian basilica. The domestic area spread mainly in the western part of the settlement. The houses were rather spacious and two large cisterns provided running water to them. Topic. Depiction of Delphi in art From the 16th century onwards, West Europe developed an interest in Delphi. In the mid-15th century Strabo was first translated in Latin. The earliest depictions of Delphi were totally imaginary, created by the German N. Goebel, who published in 1545 a text based on the map of Greece by N. Sofianos. The ancient sanctuary was depicted as a fortified city. The first travellers with archaeological interests, apart from the precursor Syriacus of Ancona, were the British George Whaler and the French Jacob Spahn, who visited Greece in a joint expedition in 1675–76. They published their impressions separately. In Whaler's Journey into Greece, published in 1682, a sketch of the region of Defi appeared, where the settlement of Castri and some ruins were depicted. The illustrations in Spahn's publication Voyage de Tali, de Dalmati, de Greece et du Levant, 1678, are considered original and groundbreaking. Travelers continued to visit Delphi throughout the 19th century and published their books, which contained diaries, sketches, views of the site, as well as pictures of coins. The illustrations often reflected the spirit of Romanticism, as evident by the works of Otto Magnus von Stackelberg, where, apart from the landscapes, La Greece. Vues pittoresques et topographiques, Paris 1834 are depicted also human types costumes et usages des pupils de la Grèce moderne de Cines sur les Lyons, Paris 1828. The Philhellene painter W. Williams has comprised the landscape of Delphi in his themes 1829, important personalities such as F. C. H. H. L. Pukeville, W. M. Leek, C. H. R. Wordsworth and Lord Byron are amongst the most important visitors of Delphi. After the foundation of the modern Greek state, the press becomes also interested in these travelers. Thus, Ephemeris writes the 17th of March 1889 in the Reviews des Dermondes. Paul Lefebvre published his memoirs from an excursion to Delphi. The French author relates in a charming style his adventures on the road, praising particularly the ability of an old woman to put back in its place the dismantled arm of one of his foreign traveling companions, who had fallen off the horse. In Arakova the Greek type is preserved intact. The men are rather athletes than farmers, built for running and wrestling, particularly elegant and slender under their mountain gear. Only briefly does he refer to the antiquities of Delphi, but he refers to a Pelasgian wall 80 meters long, on which innumerable inscriptions are carved, decrees, conventions, manumissions. Gradually the first traveling guides appeared. The revolutionary pocket books invented by Karl Baedeker, accompanied by maps useful for visiting archaeological sites such as Delphi 1894 and the informed plans, the guides became practical and popular. The photographic lens revolutionized the way of depicting the landscape and the antiquities, particularly from 1893 onwards, when the systematic excavations of the French archaeological school started. 
However, artists such as Vera Willoughby, continued to be inspired by the landscape. Delphic themes inspired several graphic artists. Besides the landscape, Pythia, Sibylla become an illustration subject even on tarot cards. A famous example constitutes Michelangelo's Delphic Sibyl 1509, the 19th-century German engraving Oracle of Apollo at Delphi, as well as the most recent The Oracle of Delphi, Ink on Paper, by the Swedish Malin Lind. Modern artists are inspired also by the Delphic maxims. Examples of such works are displayed in the Sculpture Park of the European Cultural Center of Delphi, and in exhibitions taking place at the Archaeological Museum of Delphi. <laughs> Delphi in literature Delphi inspired literature as well. In 1814 W. Haygarth, friend of Lord Byron, refers to Delphi in his work, Greece, a poem. In 1888 Charles Marie René Leconte de Lisle published his lyric drama L'Apollonide, accompanied by music by Franz Servet. More recent French authors used Delphi as a source of inspiration such as Yves Bonfoy Delphi's du second jour or Jean Sullivan nickname of Joseph Lamarchand in L'Obsession de Delphi's 1967, but also Rob McGregor's Indiana Jones and the Peril at Delphi 1991. The presence of Delphi in Greek literature is very intense. Poets such as Costas Palamas, The Delphic Hymn, 1894, Costas Karyotakis, Delphic Festival, 1927, Nikephoros Vretakis, Return from Delphi, 1957, Yanis Ritsos, Delphi, 1961-62, and Kiki Demola, Gas Omphalos and Appropriate Terrain, 1988, to mention only the most renowned ones. Angelos Cyclianos wrote the dedication of the Delphic Speech 1927, the Delphic Hymn 1927, and the Tragedy Sibylla 1940, whereas in the context of the Delphic Idea and the Delphic Festivals he published an essay titled, The Delphic Union, 1930. The noblest George Seferis wrote an essay under the title, Delphi, comprised in the book, Dokemes. The importance of Delphi for the Greeks is significant. The site has been recorded on the collective memory and have been expressed through tradition. Nikolaos Paulitis, the famous Greek ethnographer, in his studies on the life and language of the Greek people, Part A, offers two examples from Delphi. A, the priest of Apollo 176. When Christ was born a priest of Apollo was sacrificing below the monastery of Panaea, on the road of Lividea, on a site called Ligari. Suddenly he abandoned the sacrifice and says to the people. In this moment was born the Son of God, who will be very powerful, like Apollo, but then Apollo will beat him. He didn't have time to finish his speech and a thunder came down and burnt him, opening the rock nearby into two. p. 99 b. The Mylords 108 The Mylords are not Christians, because nobody ever saw them cross themselves. They originate from the old pagan inhabitants of Delphi who kept their property in castle called Adelphi, named after the two brother princes who built it. When Christ and his mother came to the site, and all people around converted to Christianity they thought that they should better leave, thus the Mylords left for the west and took all their belongings with them. The Mylords come here now and worship these stones. P. 59. Topic see also Ex voto of the Adelids Delphi Franz Weber activist made an honorary citizen of Delphi in 1997 Delphi Archaeological Museum Aristoclea, Delphic priestess of the 6th century BC, said to have been tutor to Pythagoras Greek art list of traditional Greek place names Topic Gallery Topic Notes Topic References Broad, William J. The Oracle, Ancient Delphi and the Science Behind Its Lost Secrets, New York, Penguin, 2006. ISBN 1-59-420081-5. Burkert, Walter, Greek Religion 1985. Connolly, Joan Breton, Portrait of a Priestess, Women and Ritual in Ancient Greece, Princeton University Press, 2007. ISBN 0691127468 Dempsey, T., Reverend, The Delphic Oracle, Its Early History, Influence and Fall, Oxford, B. H. Blackwell, 1918. Farnell, Lewis Richard, The Cults of the Greek States, in five volumes, Clarendon Press, 1896-1909, cf., especially, Volume 3 and Volume 4 on the Pythoness and Delphi. Fern, David. Bacalides, Politics, Performance, Poetic Tradition. Oxford University Press, 2007.
ISBN 9780199215508 Fontenrose, Joseph Eddy, The Delphic Oracle, Its Responses and Operations, with a Catalog of Responses, Berkeley, University of California Press, 1978. ISBN 0520033604 Fontenrose, Joseph Eddy, Python, A Study of Delphic Myth and Its Origins, New York, Biblio and Tannen, 1974. ISBN 0819602856 X Goodrich, Norma Laurie, Priestesses, New York, F. Watts, 1989. ISBN 0531151131 Guthrie, William Keith Chambers, The Greeks and Their Gods, 1955. Hall, Manley Palmer, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, 1928. ch. 14 cf. Greek Oracles, www. PRS Harris's HV 2015. A Bittersweet Story, The True Nature of the Laurel of the Oracle of Delphi Perspectives in Biology and Medicine. Volume 57 No. 3, Summer 2014, pp. 295-298. Herodotus, The History's Homeric Hymn to Pythian Apollo Manas, John Helen, Divination, Ancient and Modern, New York, Pythagorean Society, 1947. Park, Herbert William, History of the Delphic Oracle, 1939. Plutarch, Lives, Road, Irwin, Psyche, 1925. Seyfert, Oscar, Dictionary of Classical Antiquities, London, W. Glacier, 1895. Spiller, Henry A., John R. Hale, and Gel Z. DeBoer. The Delphic Oracle, a Multidisciplinary Defense of the Gaseous Vent Theory, Clinical Toxicology 40.2-2000-189-196. West, Martin Litchfield, The Orphic Poems, 1983. ISBN 0-19-814854-2. Miller, Stephen G. 2004. Ancient Greek Athletics. New Haven and London, Yale University Press. Lyritzes, I, Castro, Beta 2013. Delphi and Cosmovision, Apollo's Absence at the Land of the Hyperboreans and the Time for Consulting the Oracle. Journal of Astronomical History and Heritage, 16 2, 184-206. Castro Bellin, Lyritzes Ioannis and Nyquist Ann 2015, Oracular Functioning and Architecture of Five Ancient Apollo Temples Through Archaeastronomy, Novel Approach and Interpretation Nexus Network Journal, Architecture and Mathematics, 18 2, 373-395 doi, 10.1007 per seconds 0004-015-0276-2 Topic Further reading Adornado, G. 2008. Delphic Enigmas? The Jaila Zanassan, Polyzolos, and the Charioteer Statue. American Journal of Archaeology. 112 1, 29-55. Davies, J. K. Finance, Administrations, and Realpolitik, The Case of Fourth Century Delphi. In Modus Operandi, Essays in Honor of Jeffrey Rickman. Edited by M. Austin, J. Harries, and C. Smith, 1-14. London, Bulletin of the Institute of Classical Studies, Supple, 71. Davies, John, 2007. The Origins of the Destivals, Especially Delphi and the Pythia, in Pindar's Poetry, Patrons, and Festivals, from Archaic Greece to the Roman Empire. Edited by Simon Hornblower and Catherine Morgan, 47-69. Oxford, Oxford Univ. Press. Kint, Julia, 2016. Revisiting Delphi, Religion and Storytelling in Ancient Greece. Cambridge Classical Studies. Cambridge, New York, Cambridge University Press. Maurizio, Lisa 1997. Delphic Oracles as Oral Performances, Authenticity and Historical Evidence. Classical Antiquity, 16 308-334. McInerney, Jeremy 2011. Delphi and Focus, A Network Theory Approach. Pallas. 87 to 95 minus 106. McInerney, Jeremy. 1997. Parnassus, Delphi, and the Thyiades. Greek, Roman, and Byzantine Studies. 38: 3, 263 to 284. Morgan, Catherine. 1990. Athletes and Oracles: The Transformation of Olympia and Delphi in the 8th Century BC. Cambridge, UK: Cambridge Univ. Press. Partita, Elena C. 2002. The Treasuries at Delphi, an Architectural Study. Johnsard, Denmark, Paul Astroms. 
Scott, Michael, Delphi, A History of the Center of the Ancient World Princeton, NJ, Princeton University Press, 2014. ISBN 978-0-691-15081-9 Scott, Michael, 2010. Delphi and Olympia, The Spatial Politics of Panhellenism in the Archaic and Classical Periods. Cambridge and New York, Cambridge Univ. Press. Temple, Robert K. G., Fables, Riddles, and Mysteries of Delphi, Proceedings of Fourth Philosophical Meeting on Contemporary Problems, No. 4, 1999 Athens, Greece in Greek and English. Weir, Robert G. 2004. Roman Delphi and its Pythian Games. Bar Series 1306. Oxford, Hadrian. Topic 5th century evidence Petrides, p. 2010, La Seoramique Proto-Byzantine de Delphis. Une production et son contexte, École Française d'Athènes, Fools de Delphis v. Monuments Figures 4, Paris, Athènes. Petrides, p. Desroches, v. Beatty, A. 2014, Delphis de l'Antiquité Tardive. Secteur au sud est du parabole, École Française d'Athènes, Fools de Delphis 2, Topographie et Architecture 15, Paris Athènes. Petrides, p. 1997, Delphis dans l'Antiquité tardive, Premier approche topographique et surimologique, BCH 121, pp. 681-695. Petrides, p. 2003, Alpha Teliers de Potiers Protobyzantins à Delphis, in Chi, Pockertz's ed. 7 Omicron Divnes Synodrio Messionix Caramix Tes Mesogeu, Thessalonique 11 16 October 1999. Practica Athena pp. 443-446. Petrides, p. 2005, Un exemple d'architecture civile en Grèce, les maisons protobyzantines de Delphis IVIIES, Melanges Jean-Pierre Sedini, Travaux et Memoirs 15, Paris, pp. 193-204. Petrides, P. De Mou, J. 2011, La Redécouverte de Delphi's Protobyzantine, Palace 87, pp. 267-281. Topic external links Topic General Delphic Oracle on In Our Time at the BBC Official Website of the Archaeological Site Official Website of the Museum Michael Scott. Delphi, The Bellybutton of the Ancient World. BBC 4. Retrieved 23 November 2010. Homepage of the Modern Municipality in English in Greek Hellenic Ministry of Culture, Delphi C. Osborne, A Short Detour to Delphi and the Sibyls Eloise Hart, The Delphic Oracle. Three Junior Delphic Games 2007 Baguio City, Philippines, November 10-15 3 International Delphic Council ASHES 2 ART Digital Delphi Delphi Help Perva Pomos Po Delphi Russia European Cultural Center of Delphi Images of the Ancient Sanctuary of Delphi Topic Geology of Delphi Fumes and visions were not a myth for Oracle at Delphi. The New York Times. March 19, 2002. Hale, John R. Hale and et al., August 2003. Questioning the Delphic Oracle, When Science Meets Religion at This Ancient Greek Site, the two turn out to be on better terms than scholars had originally thought. Scientific American, CS1 maint, uses author's parameter, link, CS1 maint, explicit use of et al., link, Higgins, Michael and Higgins, Reynolds, 1996. A Geological Companion to Greece and the Aegean. Cornell University Press. Archived from the original on 18 June 2009, CS1 maint, uses author's parameter link, odds and ends, geology of Delphi. About.com. Archived from the original on 19 September 2005. Roach, John, August 2001. Delphic Oracle's lips may have been loosened by gas vapors. National Geographic News.